Hi, my name is Bethany Bemis, and I am a museum specialist uh, in political history at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. I am working from home here with my cat, Tesla. Uh, and today we're going to tell you about some of the cool stuff that we found in the collection. I've been working from home for the last six weeks, which means I've been working on my laptop, which is basically like a little portable desk. So some days it's in my kitchen and some days it's on my couch. And today it's in my office. But in the 18th century, if you were someone conducting business and needing to write, you would have had a portable desk, kind of like a laptop, except made for writing by hand. Today, I'm gonna to tell you the story of one of our writing desks from the collection in political history and how it kept a secret from museum staff for almost 50 years. The desk in question belonged to Benjamin Talmadge. He is probably best remembered as George Washington's spy master. So he was the head of the Culper spy ring during the Revolutionary War, which is a pretty cool job and something pretty cool to be remembered for. <laughs> um, but the desk comes to the Smithsonian in 1968. It's the bequest of Talmadge's great granddaughter, Emily Howell Wilkins, and it had been in the collection ever since. And curator Harry Rubenstein brought it out of storage one day in 2017 because he had received a public inquiry asking how people like Talmadge, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, other people who use portable desks had carried ink with them around. Now, the answer to that question is that they carried powdered ink and then they mixed it with liquid later uh, so they didn't have to travel with a liquid. But that's kind of beside the point in this case because when we took the desk down, we knocked on a back panel and realized it was making a hollow sound, like there was something behind it, but we couldn't figure out how to get it open. And we kind of put it aside every day. Some of us would come in and stare at it and think about what could possibly, how would we get into this empty space in this desk and what could possibly be in here? This guy was a spy, right? I mean, you have no idea. So one day, Harry actually was in storage and he removed an ink bottle from one of the little um, spaces at the top of the desk. And that revealed a way to get into the desk. Uh, and I'm actually gonna let Harry show you uh, how we open the desk. This is curator Harry Rubenstein with the desk open as if one was gonna write on it. He's taking out the small glass inkwell that reveals another small black container which at first we didn't notice because it was so dark against the color of the wood. Now underneath that is a small hole that's clearly intentional. So Harry's flipping up the writing surface and behind that is the panel that sounds hollow when you knock on it. Harry takes out the locking pin of the desk and realizes it fits perfectly into this hole. If you depress it into the hole, the false front pops off and it reveals three small drawers. We didn't think we would be so lucky as to find anything in the drawers, but what we found was in fact a small gold magnifying glass behind drawer number one. Behind drawer number two, uh, a box that threw some of us for a loop until conservator Beth Richwine showed us that it was actually uh, an early mechanical pencil. And we were absolutely giddy to have found these things. And then behind drawer number three, we found a piece of paper that said Benjamin Talmadge on it. And when you opened it up, it revealed a lock of white hair from Benjamin Talmadge, from the spy master himself. Literally one of the coolest moments in my career at the Smithsonian, um, discovering Benjamin Talmadge's hair in his secret compartment in his traveling desk. I mean, that only happens at the Smithsonian. <laughs> But um, it's pretty incredible that the desk could have hid a secret from the Smithsonian staff for 50 years. And it's one of my favorite stories to tell about the collection because it shows that there's always something to learn from our collections. No matter how old they are, every day is a chance to find something new. Thanks. Say bye, Tesla. Bye-bye.